Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sean Carl S. Pama. I am the reporter of the methods of the data collection in the qualitative research. Okay, so there are four examples of or methods of the data collection in a qualitative research. We have the interviews, documents, observation, and audiovisual materials. Today we're going to tackle about observation. So what is observation? Observation is one of the traditional qualitative data collection methods used by researchers to gather descriptive text data by observing people and their behavior at events or in their natural settings. In this method, the researcher is completely immersed in watching or seeing people by taking a participatory stance to take down notes. Aside from taking down notes, different techniques such as videos, photographs, audio recordings, tangible items like artifacts and souvenirs are also used. Observational data is a valuable form of research that can give researchers information that goes beyond numbers and statistics. So in general, observation is a systematic way to collect data by observing people in natural situations or settings. There are many different types of observation, each with its strength and weaknesses. Observation is a useful qualitative data collection method, especially when you want to study the ongoing process, a situation or reaction on a specific issue related to the people being observed. Okay, so here are examples of uh, different kinds of uh, observation. First, we have the covert versus overt. So what is covert observation? So the researcher observes secretly while the overt observation people know the researcher is observing them. Overt versus overt observation has arguably the most noticeable difference in the role of uh, the researcher's place in the process. Covert observation takes place when a researcher is observing the activity in secret, perhaps through a hidden video camera. In overt observation, as the name describes, the people uh, being observed know a researcher is observing them. So as with the other methods, there are obvious strengths and weaknesses of both forms of observation. An advantage of overt observation is that it lets researchers be honest with the participants and tell them they are being observed. This avoids any ethical issues like the lack of informed consent. However, a related disadvantage is that participants understand the aims of the observers, so they more likely to alter their behavior. Okay, so once the participants alter their behavior, it is called the Hawthorne effect. So what is a Hawthorne effect? It refers to a type of a reactivity in which individuals modify an aspect of their behavior in a response to their awareness of being observed. So, as hinted above, covert observation arises immediate ethical issues, issues since people involved in a study should give informed consent first. However, covert observation allows researchers to access groups that otherwise would not participate in the studies, allowing researchers to expand knowledge on lesser known social groups. Next, we have the uh, participant versus non-participant observation. So, participant observation, the researcher is involved in the activity while in the non, the researcher is separate from the activity. So, participant observation is when a researcher is involved in the activity they are observing. For example, the researcher is a participant in an alcoholics anonymous group and they are observed something about the group. So in non-participant observation, the researcher is separate from the activity. For example, an adult in the back of the classroom observing the students' test-taking skills. So 
Participant observation offers the researcher more context and greater understanding of what's being studied. However, participating in the activity can change the behavior of those being observed. By the same measure, non-participant observation allows researchers to use tools like recorders or cameras to more accurately capture what is being observed, but it may provide more limited insight into the dynamics and context of what is being studied. Participant observation offers the researcher a greater understanding of what's being studied. However, it can change the behavior of those being observed. Both participant and non-participant observation can yield valuable or, or uh, detrimental observation data depending on your study. However, they are often most effective when used together to develop, to develop a more complete picture of what's being studied. Like participant and non-participant observation, both of these forms of observation are most valuable when used together to understand details with the, in a bigger picture. For example, a researcher may combine simple observational data. How many people attended a workshop? With the behavioral observation data, how active people participate in the workshop? To assess how effective a workshop is. Next, we have the direct versus indirect observation. So direct observation, the researcher observed and active as it happens, while the indirect observation, the researcher observed the results of an activity. So while they uh, seem similar, direct and indirect observation have important methodological differences. So direct observation is when the researcher is observing an activity or process while it's happening. Example, they are watching students in a cafeteria at lunch to learn about their eating habits. In contrast, indirect observation involves the researcher observing the results of an activity or process after there, after it happened. Example, they examine the trash left over after the students' lunches or learn about their food waste habits. So, while they are very similar, Direct and indirect observation occur at different times during the study and, more notably, offer different relevant information to the researcher. So, direct observation is valuable because it offers real-time information. Its weakness, however, is that it misses anything outside of the observation. So direct observation is valuable because it offers real time, as it explained earlier. Okay. And this means that direct observation only offers information about a part of the bigger picture. So direct observation can also be prone to bias and inaccuracies, since people often behave differently when they know they are being observed. The value in indirect observation lies in the fact that it is non-invasive in people's behavior while not be effective in the presence or by the presence of the observer. Its weakness, however, is that information code or information collected could be limited depending on what is being directly observed. So here are the pros of collecting observational data. So first, observational or observation lets the researchers view and test a hypothesis in a real world, making it less hypothetical other than the data collection methods. So observation allows the researchers to create and observe actual situation. For example, instead of using data to try and predict what will happen when a consumer pass a large product display observation can gather actual results. Next, we have the observation is still for situation in which nonverbal communication is important for complete research. Then, lastly, observation provides a more reliable measure or a measurement of actual behavior than self-reported metrics. So, here are the cons of collecting observational data. Observational research can include high degree of research bias, 
the observer is human and his or her subconscious opinion or biases can affect the analysis. Observation can be heavily dependent on interpretation since the researcher cannot see attitudes or thoughts. It can be difficult to do accurate analysis on why people do what they do from observation alone. So some forms of observational research don't always return an accurate demographic sample. For example, researchers are sometimes left at the mercy of whoever was available while the study took place, whether or not that lines up with the larger population. And lastly, observe or observation often only tells one part of the story. Observing action tells the researcher what people choose to do, but it doesn't tell why they choose to do it. So that, that would be all. Thank you.